And we want to welcome all our viewers to an exciting show that we have today. Uh, Kelly has brought on uh, Keith Hardy with First Citizen as our guest. Keith, welcome. Good morning, guys. Thank you for having me. We're real excited, especially when you start talking about money, because without money, <laughs> life becomes a little bit more difficult. <laughs> that it does. That it does. It's, it's, yeah, you know, it doesn't solve all the problems, but. I'd rather have problems and money than problems and no money. This so, is true. Uh, and Kelly, we all know uh, this is um, part of the Kenron Foundation and what you do to help kids um, have resources uh, that help them develop and, and look forward to a career. Education is the focus. So That's we're excited it. that we can bring opportunities to people that might not necessarily have them. And, your relationship with Keith um, um, gave us a, a chance to talk and go in depth into money, which I think for, for most people in most schools, sometimes we don't dig deep enough into the basics. And that's what we're going to get. That's what we're going to accomplish this morning. So, Keith, thank you so much for being with us. Just a couple housekeeping things. If anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section and we'll be able to uh, post them up there. So we'd love to have your questions. If they come in after the show, just put them in the comment section and Kelly and people on her team can answer them. And we'll, we'll put some information up about Keith where you can get a hold of them. So I'm going to um, go ahead and first turn the show over to you, Keith, because we want to get as much information about uh, key things about money as we possibly can. So with that being said, I'm going to get the screen up here and it should be up here in a second. And there we go. So um, let me see if I can go back one. And <laughs> Keith saying, come on, Pete, get the thing. Nah, no worries. Uh, I, 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 I figured okay, I'd Keith. take a moment to kind of share, you know, like the why yeah. behind what I do. Right. So, you know, you have the about me, right. Um, you know, Right, I'm a business banker with First Citizens Bank, um, Majority State University graduate. Um, I've been in banking my entire adult life. So um, I'm married, uh, one young boy right now. So my wife and I, we have a Keith James Hardy. Um, and a lot of what I'm going to go into is what bankers teach their own children, right? Um, so I'm the, you guys get a little peek behind the curtain, behind a lot of the boring information I'll be sharing with him and my nieces and nephews over the years, and years and years to come. But, um, you know, I... I serve as the banker for my family and my entire extended family. Um, and what's interesting is, is, is I always, I always kind of harken back, right? I remember when I was about eight or nine years old, um, you know, staying in the summer with grandma. Um, I, I was making sure that she was my first financial advisor and her guidance was simple and easy. It was baby, save your money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so it's with that that I, you know, I really just began my understanding and knowledge of money. The idea was that, you know, if you have a dollar, save 50 cents, right? Um, you know, around the time where I was 18, I uh, you know, was working. Uh, my first job was at Wendy's, actually a little bit earlier than that. But um, I remember about 18 years old, uh, I was I was at Wendy's and I was a young college student. Um, I had, of course, it's probably with banking, right? Young people overdrawing accounts. And I remember my very first banker, uh, Ms. Cheryl Schrader at the um, uh, South Trust Bank in Stone Mountain, Georgia, really helped sat me down and taught me some of the basics that I'm going to go into today. Um, at about 28 years old, I bought my first house and my financial advisor was helping me kind of plan for things to come. And now this year I'll be 38 years old. And again, like I'm taking all this information and applying that to my son, my nephews and nieces and kind of helping grow money smart children. Um, Pete, you said something earlier, you write money. It's not the most important thing, you know, um, but without it, we definitely, uh, we definitely experience more problems without it. So if you're going to need it and you're going to have a resource, it's best for you to understand the basics of how to use it. And Kelly, thank you for introducing me to Kenrod and the, uh, you, know, you guys program, which you guys have here is powerful. 
Um, I would love to see, you know, uh, every bank out there has a program like this available. So professionals like yourself that are in front of young people, you know, tap those resources that are available. Um, I'm thankful to First Citizens Bank because this is a cornerstone piece of our, uh, you know, our financial literacy and our way of our giving back um, to the communities in which we serve. Um, and it's something that's been incumbent on me since I've been a young man who has gotten a lot of information and, and resources in my life and my development. And I try to give back as well. So thank you guys for having me. Um, I'll try not to bore you to death with too much boring detail, but I feel like the program, the, the package that we have credit together, it gives the highlights um, for students, you know, around that eight year old range where I was starting out all the way up to 18, you know, you need to understand the basics and I'll kind of interject how some new technology, you know, may replace things like writing checks, but not completely and fully. Um, you know, young people can cash out money back and forth today to one another, right, as an example. Um, but doing so, they should still be tracking their uh, purchases. So um, what will, thanks people that advance there. Uh, so the, we've kind of gotten this broken up into um, you and your money, right? Ideas of choosing a bank, um, using a checking account, a little bit of a how-to. Um, more importantly than you know, spending money is definitely saving money. So we've got some information about saving for the future. Um, creating a budget and spending wisely is one of the, if not the most impactful thing that you can do. Um, and then behind that, establishing in, um, a good credit reputation. So um, we've got some additional tools and resources, Kelly, that um, you know, come from um, you know, major uh, institutions that will be able to allow people to kind of take this information, package it and bundle it home. Um, but with that said, uh, Pete, why don't you advance to, let's start with choosing a bank. Uh, yeah, advance the slide there. Yeah, so um, gosh, when it comes to choosing a bank, and like I said, I've been a banker my entire adult life, there's a lot that goes into um, why you would choose a bank um, and how you would do so, right? So Pete, if you advance to the next slide there, um, some of the questions that you're gonna ask yourself um, you know, you're going to want to choose a bank that has a strong reputation. Um, you're going to want to compare the different services that one bank offers to the next. Um, you're going to look for convenience, right? Because um, are you able to take money out when you need it? But more importantly, I think, are you able to sit down and consult or at least um, conversate and consult with someone um, when the time is needed? And does is there anything about, you know, that, that benefits that bank that you offer with? So um, on the next slide, if Pete, if you advance once more, um, you'll see a little breakdown of just a chart that um, one can use to compare various banks. Um, and this is a good exercise because if you're going to decide to start a relationship, right, um, and banking is very much about relationships. If you're going to start a relationship, you want to know that the partner that you're in this relationship with has the tools and the resources that you need, right? Um, some additional things you consider, you know, are how you can make contact with your bank. Um, how far is nearest branch? Um, are there any, you know, you may, they may have multiple online options, but is there a localized way for you making contact? Um, you may need things like cashier's checks or money orders, or even have need of uh, storing things in safe deposit boxes, right? Now, the young kids on the uh, <laughs> viewing this right now may not necessarily have need of those, but their parents will. And more often than not, um, you know, my son's first account uh, will be at First Citizens, right? Because that's where his father works, that's where his father banks. So more often than not, you know, young people kind of just begin their banking relationships with their parents' bank without really ever taking an exercise to figure out, does this benefit them directly? So this slide has some great tools that are just kind of used to compare accounts. Um, thought that was worthwhile, but if, Pete, if you'd advance to the next, uh, the next one, um, we're gonna kind of go into how to use a checking account. Now, very quick anecdote here. Um, when I was 18 years old, you know, working in fast food, I worked at the Wendy's in uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia, um, you know, making money coming into the account. I occasionally near the end of the month could not figure out how and why there were more fees on the account than money that it got in. Right. And that was due to my failure to simply track the multiple purchases that I was making. Um, so we're going to dive into how to use a checking account. And on the next slide, they'll have some information that you need to know. Um, but so, you know, the obvious, right? Carrying checks or a debit card is safer than carrying cash because if you drop a $20 bill 
in a parking lot, you likely will not see that twenty dollar bill again. Truth be told, you know the very same is, is uh, for debit cards and, and checks as well. But um, you want to make sure that you keep your money safe at all points in time, right? You can easily deposit those cash or those checks um, in that account. And with that account, you can track what you spend. And that 18-year-old Keith, that's what he was not doing. Uh, Keith was relying on the banks, you know, calling the online banking to tell me how much money I had available and then to go and swipe my card. But often there were transactions that the bank had not accounted for because they had not arrived yet. So um, we'll ho hopefully chat about ways you can avoid that. Um, you also, you know, be able to download your activity into a budgeting program. Um, a great resource that I use and I love is the Mint Money app. I've used that app, I think, since it was created by Intuit uh, or before Intuit bought it, uh, gosh, probably a decade ago. Um, it is a phenomenal tool and it's gotten better because um, many of the business professionals know that Intuit also operates QuickBooks, right? So business owners out there are using Intuit's QuickBook product. Um, the Mint Money app, I, I think, has been great and it's made my life easier. That in conjunction with my online banking. Um, and you want to record, you know, the money that you put into the account and every time you take money out of the account, obviously, um, and each month you do want to reconcile that account. You want to make sure that perhaps a check that you wrote or an ATM withdrawal that you made that you may have, um, you know, misplaced that receipt. You want to make sure that you at least every month update these records. So, um, as you go on to, you know, opening your account, um, for young people, this can be done online, right? Um, but more often than not, it's still a good behavior to schedule a time to go into a bank. Um, I know right now because of COVID, um, you know, that's time scheduling, you know, maybe a little bit strange, but as we get used to our new normal and as things return to you know, normal, normal, um, going in, having that conversation is a very good thing to do. So you'll um, open that account and typically get order checks. And if you would like, you'll order an ATM or debit card. Be very cautious with these tools because you will notice that um, it is very easy to spend money. So because it's so easy to spend money, we must take the time to make sure that we are tracking um, how we're spending it and how we're saving it. Right. So we'll get into budgeting in just a little bit. If you advance this slide, there we go. Um, so opening an account, you'll deposit you know, that money into your local bank via cash or check. Um, electronic transfer, you know, most of the kids nowadays may never know the uh, the story of, you know, getting paid on a Friday, getting your check, having to run to the bank, or I think almost all the employers today, you know, are setting up a sort of electronic deposit for their, you know, their, their funds. So um, long ago are those days of waiting until Friday afternoon to cash a check to go out and have fun on the weekend. <laughs> um, creating a deposit slip for the amount of money you want to put in. And Pete, I don't know if we can zoom in on that, but um, a key behavior that I always want people to do is make sure you fill that deposit slip out completely. Um, make sure that you have, um, whether it's that first line is always cash, right? So you want to record the amount of cash you're depositing, um, the date, and more often than not, those second lines under there, if you're depositing a check, you know, it's a good idea to write the check number on there and the amount of that check. Um, then there's a less cash line. Um, uh, it may be a little bit difficult to see there, but um, if you were to were take money back from that deposit, then you'll, of course, put there. Then there's a net amount that goes into the account at the end of the day. This behavior of monitoring what you're putting in and recording it on that slip is a great behavior for all young people. Because if you play the game Monopoly, you know, sometimes there's a bank error in your favor. Very rarely do banks make errors. But this is just a good behavior for you to have. Um, that, of course, we know is somewhat being replaced with the ability to do a mobile banking check deposit, right? Um, so at least with that, you have the, the actual check itself for you to retain. But um, for as many young people out there that may be looking at like this, there will be a need more often than not to uh, deposit cash, you know, either in the drive through log or at an ATM. Um, I always recommend you know how to complete a deposit slip so that you understand the thought process um, behind making that deposit if you choose to do so at an ATM. Um, off that soapbox, we'll move on to the next uh, slide there, Pete. All right, so opening your account continue. The most important document that you sign <laughs> after reviewing the terms and conditions of that account are the bank's signature card, right? Is that bank signature card? Um, it's among the most important documents because from an identity perspective, if you are writing checks, this is where your signature is compared. 
So as you see there, um, you know, a sample check uh, listed there, you'll see um, um, how writing that check, you want to make sure that you have your signature card completed and it's dated. Um, all parties who are on the account will be the ones who can sign. Um, young people, more often than not, your first account will be a savings account until you reach, you know, the mid-teenage age range. Um, at that point in time, you'll sign a checking account, likely with your parent. Um, there may be some restrictions on that account, but the idea is that you're understanding that this document you're signing, it lists, these are the only parties that can sign on this account and remove funds from my account. Um, don't know if we have any questions I want to go too, too quickly through, but these are the basics of opening that account. Um, I know on the next slide, we'll kind of go into some of the check writing activity there. Um, yeah, I missed this, Keith. Uh, Ian King, uh, who I know is a financial advisor, just loved your comparison chart. And I, I think that uh, your tools are good. And Ian recognized that because he understands the, the money um, part of it, too. So thanks, Ian, oh, for that. Awesome. If anybody wants to ask questions, just put them in your comment section and we'll we'll get to them um, as quickly as we can. OK, Keith, I'm going to take okay. You can go back. I'll get that one off of there. Yeah, All let's right. go to that check writing part, right? Yeah, the fun part. <laughs> and, you know, and to the young people today, I recognize that, again, Cash App, Zelle, you know, uh, PayPal, there are so many ways you're like, I'll never write a check. But I'm talking to the young people. Um, about three quarters of you guys will start your own business. So when you're the boss, you will be writing checks. <laughs> so because a check is the best way to convey money, you know, that's legally recognized and a way to track that expense for your business. So the activity and understanding of learning how to write a check is still very important, even in today's era. Um, even if your employees are receiving direct deposit, if you're doing business, there will be a government entity, an insurance company, something that will require a check. So better to know how to do it than not, right? So um, elements of a check, right? You want to write clearly and you know, they say non-erasable language makes sense. You know, um, you don't want to use an ink that could bleed away. Um, you want to write obviously the date on the check and space provided. You want to enter the payee. Um, what's always interesting is banking. You know, if your name is, um, you know, I'm sorry, William, but you go by Bill, right? You, you want to write the name that is on the person's ID just in case they want to cash that check. <laughs> uh, so writing the name of the person of the company on the check. Um, completing the dollar amount and writing out the amount in words and dollars and fractions as well. These are tools that banks use to make sure that, you know, we don't accidentally deposit a check for greater than intended. Um, sometimes a hundred without a decimal in the right place could be um, either intentionally or accidentally interpreted as greater than that, right? So these are behaviors that you want to do to protect your money and, you know, you want to protect your money. <laughs> if you don't, people will try to take it from you. Um, you'll sign the check um, just as you do in your signature card. Um, and you want to use that memo line for, you know, just a note to yourself as to why you wrote this check. Um, insurance premium, partial year, uh, payment for lawn care, um, purchase of um, um, bake sale goods or, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, we will cash up each other money after, you know, going out and grouping dinner or something like that. But the behavior of recording somewhere that memo line is good for you later so that you recall what this check was for, what the amount was, et cetera. Um, if we advance once more there, Pete, please. We'll take a look at just a sample check in and of itself. Um, this is what it looks like when it's written completely right. And you see that it looks like I wrote this check for paint and brushes. So. We were doing some uh, you know, decorating on the house there. Um, payable to the local hobby store. Um, we spent $5.35. Yes, young people today, this will likely be a debit card swipe. <laughs> this will likely, uh, or your smartphone tap at the, uh, you know, the checkout registry there. But um, remember that when you spend that money, you still want to go and record that transaction. So hopefully if you are swiping a debit card, if you are, you know, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Tap to Pay, hopefully you did download some sort of, you know, budget and money tool that lets you just write those transactions down um, as they occur. Or you keep enough cash on hand. Like this is what this is what my first banker taught me. You know, Keith, if you're not going to balance it to the penny, 
you may want to leave yourself a fifty hundred dollar cushion, you know, just in case. Um, but if you're going to spend every nickel, you need to write down every nickel. So <laughs> I will pass that on to you guys as well. Um, gosh, I think that year I may have paid that bank about two hundred dollars in this very short span of time. Um, <laughs> that young lady was very thankful because I had taken the time to learn. She was able to get you know an approval to reverse about half of those fees, but. You know, two hundred dollars in fees for a young guy. You know, working. Uh, you know, an hourly rate. That, that was a significant portion of my going out and having fun money for that weekend. So, um, thank you to Miss Schrader. Wherever you are, hopefully you're retired now and enjoying the good life. But you taught me well. <laughs> um, next elements of a check. So this is what this would look like when you record this check in your ledger. I hear the kids screaming at me already. Again, if you're cash apping. <laughs> Just make sure that you're recording how much you're cash apping or you're leaving a little bit of extra money available because, um, you know, you do not want to overdraft your account. Um, a, uh, a check register always comes with an order of checks that you may have. So it is good. And it's talking to the parents there. Um, you know, it's good to start them off with the old fashioned way so that whatever new fashion tools are available, they'll understand the basics. And the basic is recording transactions as they happen. You want your ledger to be the most accurate versus the bank because you know when you sent money to your best friend, you know, for you know whatever you guys are doing out on the weekend, right? Um, the bank won't know until that item presents. Um, and that will likely come up here in a little bit as we kind of talk about transactions going forward. So Pete, I won't beat this a dead horse if you advance the uh, next slide there. Register first, check second. I love that. Um, like I said before, your your written record is the best or your electronic record in your smartphone where you record these transactions is the best record. Um, bank errors are rare, but it's your money. You always want to protect your money, right? Um, we can advance the next two slides because then the next one is just about, you know, just the, using a check. We kind of covered that. Endorsing a check. So this is where... Uh, young people, someone has conveyed money to you by a check. Um, you only want to sign the back of the check when you're ready to deposit it. Um, yes, you know, and I, and I say deposit because I'm more of a fan of you depositing money in your account than just going catching the check and spending the money, right? I want you to get in the habit of putting that money in the bank and letting it sit. Um, hopefully, it's going into your savings account to earn a little fraction of interest in time. Um, but yes, you only endorse it when you're ready to use it. Um, and you want to endorse on the back of the check and you sign your name as it appears on the front of the check. So hopefully they've written your name, <laughs> uh, not your nickname, your, 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 your full name there. Right. So um, my son, we call him KJ, um, but we would prefer if you're going to write him a check, it would say Keith James Hardy <laughs> as opposed to able to KJ. Um, well, he's two now. He doesn't have an ID. So leave a problem for later. Uh, Pete, advance the slide for me, please. Awesome. And Keith, also, you, you're you clearer when you're leaning forward. There must be just a tad. Yeah, so you're ah, good right there. But when you perfect, move backwards, perfect. there's a tiny bit of less of the clarity. So just a heads it. up there. But go I'll ahead, Keith. All right. Well, you know, so Pete and Keith, if I could just make an announcement. We yeah. are going to give uh, have a drawing for a giveaway. Uh, after the live streaming show, we have a giveaway for a one night stay at the Omni Hotel at Truist Park. For everyone who participates during the, the, during the live streaming. So please, we have one participant so far, but certainly we would like to have more. So if you are interested, if you have a question, please reach out. We want to hear from you so that you can be eligible to win our door prize. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Awesome. Well, all right. Hopefully get more participants in there. Uh, ask yeah. questions. I'm here for it. Um, <laughs> also, so again, uh, uh, cashing a check, you know, um, you receive an amount equal to that of the check. You will always be required to show your photo ID. Um, so make sure you keep, you know, your photo ID. Um, and of course, your, all, your goal is to always cash your check at your bank to avoid check cashing charges, right? Um, you know, transferring money in that service is a fee that other people will charge. So in order to minimize those fees, you always want to go to your bank. Um, example here of that deposit. Um, you can deposit a check at your bank and your bank's ATM. Um, or like I said, nowadays, we can pull out our smartphone, deposit the back of it. 
but you you know either want to write for deposit only or actually sign your name, right? That is the proper way to do it. Doing without it will have, to have that um, item returned. So do it the right way. Pete, if you advance once more, sir. All right. This is not done as much today, but you know sometimes there are instances where you would want to convey the check from yourself to someone else. Um, this is called signing over a check. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, that's when you give someone a check you were given, you want to sign it over to them. Um, occasionally, young people, you'll do that to, um, you know, a check. Let's say if it's your payroll check and um, you need to put it into a savings account with maybe you and your siblings and your, your parents control that account, that effect. So by signing this check over to them, um, you give them permission to use it. So you just want to make sure that you're doing that in their presence at the bank. Again, it's not as commonly used today because today we can simply deposit money in our account and cash app, Zelle, move money to one another. Um, but it's a good thing to know and have knowledge of how to do that. Um, there may be questions on that. I'll be prepared for that. Now we'll move forward. Um, all right, using an ATM and debit card. So always be careful, right? Always make sure you try to use ATMs in well-lit areas. Um, your bank ATM obviously will help you avoid ATM fees. Um, never write your PIN code on your debit card. Sounds, you know, especially to this generation, um, you know, they're used to having to create strong passwords to prevent hacking of their social media. So you would think that they know better than to write a pin code on the back of their ID, but I've been in banking for 15 years and I've seen it all. So um, I'll never miss an opportunity to remind people of that, um, as well as don't put on a little sticky note, anything like that, right? Um, but yeah, using ATM, um, and Pete, you can likely advance to the next slide here. Um, hey, Keith, it's a good way to a, yes, a quick note, you, you just, I mean, I think that's excellent advice on the pin code. The uh, in Hawaii, I guess it was back maybe six months ago, mm -hmm. how they um, got into the emergency system and basically almost shut down the island was they uh, the guy had the password and information on his computer written and they picked that up. Hackers picked it up and was able to hack into the system, the emergency system. Wow. So, yeah, be careful where you put that sensitive uh, confidential information. All right, Keith, go ahead. And you know, and that's a good point. So on that point, I use a, um, in, in, the, in the most um, internet service providers, um, there's one in particular that will give you a um, little, little tool that lets you kind of save and sync all your passwords. So I use that. Um, I have a little app on my phone that's secure and it's locked. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever it takes, right? So that you're not doing something as simple as writing on a sticky note or, <laughs> um, you know, I I've seen horror stories, right? But but the idea there, there are many tools in them electronic that are, allow you more secure and data um, being stored. You know, pick, take your pick of them, right? But whatever you do, make sure you use them. Um, the one that I use, I love it because I can kind of, um, I've had the same pin code for my entire adult life. So I'm not forgetting it anytime soon. But, you know, when you're starting out in, in banking, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it, it can, be, can be tumultuous. So, um, all right. So using an ATM card. So, um, Signing the panel on the back of the card is so interesting. Very few people even do that nowadays. But um, we used to check IDs when we <laughs> swipe cards. It's not commonplace, but that's why that panel is there. It's a good idea to do so. Um, keep your card in a safe place, right? So if you're going to carry the card, keep it safe. Um, don't drop it. <laughs> um, memorize your, your personal identification number, your PIN code, um, and treat that card as if it's cash, right? You know, um, far too often, you know, you'll see people just handing someone their card and saying, run and go and get this, you know, make sure you, you, you think of this card as cash. And then that way, if you treat it as cash, you'll, you'll be much more mindful in how you use it. Um, you should never share your, your, your pin card number um, over the phone. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, you just never do that. Um, the, the card numbers, right. On itself there. Um, Entering transactions into your register as you make them. Again, you'll see this is a theme here. Your record should be the most up to date of the two records from the bank versus you. Um, this morning, I made a purchase on Amazon. Um, that Amazon purchase will debit my credit card. You know, I went ahead and recorded that transaction because at some point the credit card com company will see it. But unless I remember it, they, they, uh, I, my record will be the most synced in the transaction there. 
Um, notify the bank immediately if your card is lost, stolen, or you feel it may be compromised, right? So this activity of monitoring your accounts, um, you know, a lot of every online banking tool nowadays for young people, you can set a, an alert up for whatever amount of a transaction for how, how frequently it is. So that way, if something pops up that you don't recognize, you can quickly shut that card down, get a new card ordered and move on. Um, this takes, um, this always happens over the summer travel season, which has been impacted this year by COVID. Um, but yes, you know, using that card and, and making sure they're secure, you, you, you want to try to avoid being, you know, traveling in Cancun and not having access to money to be able to make it back home, right? So um, always, always, always make sure that you notify immediately if you're seeing transactions that you don't recognize or if you've lost that card. Um, and actually, lastly, just for a safety tip, you know, only use ATMs in very well lit areas. You'll um, ATMs nowadays are so commonplace. They're almost everywhere. Um, just as a personal tip for myself and my family for their safety, I, I, I recommend that you um, only use ATMs where there is well lighting that are, you know, um, in an area where it makes criminals less likely to um, try to um, take your money from you. So uh, good best practice there. And I'm glad the bank put that reminder in there. Uh, Pete, if you'd advance once more for me, please, sir. All right, choose a smart pen. Long story short, just make it for something that you can't remember. <laughs> uh, advance once more, please, sir. I love this reminder here. It is a balancing act. So that is a ledger. That is your record, right? In order for you, the, the banks will have an overdraft fee as a hard reminder to you that you have spent too much money. <laughs> Um, without it, believe me, we would spend way more than we have all the time. So uh, that non-sufficient funds charge can be easily avoided. Um, and when uh, Ms. Schrader taught me how to avoid it, I have not paid a non-sufficient funds charge since that day. So balance that checkbook often. All right. Keeping up with your account. Right. So each month you will get a bank statement that will show all the money that was entered or taken out of your account. Right. Um, so, you know. Make sure that you uh, this is accurate. Um, of course, the statement cut off. Sometimes there'll be a transaction that will move on from, let's say, one period to another. Um, but your your goal is to be look for um, any unchecked items in your register, right? And make sure that you have all the information. When you see bank fees or charges, you know you may forget that using that bank ATM was going to cost you three dollars and fifty cents or four dollars, right? Um, so the end of the month reconciliation, that's a great activity that will help be a hard reminder to you that, yes, your account may be four dollars off. Um, and if you visited multiple ATMs, you may be costing yourself more money. It may be a good idea for you to change your money withdrawal process. Um, number one, using your bank's ATM. So maybe driving the extra block to find your ATM. Right. Or number two. Talking with your bank at the beginning, as we talked about, learning what are some of the perks for the account. Does this account come with no ATM or foreign ATM fees? Meaning if I bank at bank X, can I withdraw money from bank Y without a fee? Um, and of course, if your account statement doesn't balance, make sure you go back and review that. You want to get to the bottom of why. So at the end of the month for September, Keith is going to be doing that very same thing for the Hardy household. All right, young people, here is what my grandmother, remember I said, is my very first financial advisor. Um, so Ian, what you do is a great guy. I know Ian had a comment earlier. What you do is an amazing job. My first financial advisor was Ruthie Mae Smiley, and she said, baby, save. So that is my message to young people as well. Young people, save, please. Um, savings make sense. Pete, advance on once more, please. Um, Putting aside money and making sure that you have it available for large ticket purchases or a financial goal is a behavior that is the best thing that you can adopt while you are young. Um, I've opined today that, you know, young people today can, if, if, if a young person just won the lottery tomorrow, they want a million dollars, I, I would bet they could spend a million dollars in one day, right? You could. Nerva Carvana, a car to you today without leaving your house, right? You can go on Amazon and go ballistic and make all the purchases in the world, right? 
Um, interesting, the behavior of savings um, is not something that you see, you know, reminded of constantly. You are constantly bombarded with images of things you can spend money on. So yes, you can go um, party, you know, in Ibiza. You can go all across the, you know, the the, the, the uh, 50 states. You can go and do all of these things, have a great time. But if you haven't gotten the basics for savings, you are going to impact yourself in the future. Um, and I'll give you a specific, specific example, young people. Um, Albert Einstein is quoted with saying, the most powerful force in the universe is compounding interest. This is the guy who created the theory of relativity, who, who of all the forces in the universe, gravity, magnetism, you name it, he said compounding interest is the most powerful force. So I want to teach you a power that can help you throughout your entire adult life. So preparing for big purchases, bicycles, uh, new computer. I think the PlayStation and the Xbox have a brand new product out this year, right? Um, hopefully you saved last year when you knew that that was coming up this year. Uh, paying for special activities. So, you know, movies, amusement parks that might be impacted now because of COVID. So hopefully you young people that are in the um, 18 to 21 year old range, you know, I know you plan for that great vacation, but maybe you are now saving money for that 2021 or 2022 vacation because you couldn't travel for a time here in 2020. Um, paying for college expenses. Yes, college expenses will mount tremendously. Books are expensive. So make sure you're planning ahead um, and preparing to become independent. So, you know, for the young people there, you know, you're eight to 10 years old. This is a far off goal for you, but for you, you will be amazed how quickly you will find yourself in your later teens and you're ready to go off and be independent. So um, this is my favorite tip here. You will see this tip one repeated with anyone who talks about banking and savings. Pay yourself first. A favorite book of mine is Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And another book that I read more recently, um, um, the author I completely forget, but both of them talk about paying yourself first. Um, and more contemporarily now, we talk about paying yourself first and making it automatic, right? So... In reality, a 18, 19 year old today working their job will likely get a direct deposit on Friday. I want you to go into your banking app and set up an automatic transfer for nothing less than 10% of your weekly, biweekly, monthly salary. You will pay yourself first. Um, and if you live at home with mom and dad and you're not paying rent, you're gonna now have to put away 20 or 30% or greater, right? This behavior will help you harness this power uh, that Albert Einstein talked about of compounding interest. Spoiler alert, um, bank saving rates are low. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this force may not happen quite as <laughs> tremendously as uh, uh, Albert Einstein advised. But, you know, men like Ian King out there, once, you, once you've begun saving and you put some money away, he will help you with some of the plans to help you grow that money. But, um, a finance advisor cannot help you unless you are not in the behavior of paying yourself first and saving. I will get on that soapbox multiple times in the rest of the presentation. So um, someone will have to get me off of it. But um, so think of savings as the bill you have to pay. And, and, uh, and the author who uh, I apologize, I cannot remember, but um, the idea was to pay yourself like that Sprint T-Mobile AT&T bill, right? Make it automatic. Pay yourself mm -hmm. on the first and the fifteenth, or the for whatever the payday is. Make that payment automatic, and hey, be sure to collect that loose change. I know now. Right now, we have a national coin shortage, so save that loose change, roll it up, and please take it to the bank because the entire world needs it. But just make sure that you have the behavior of collecting your coins and your resources and accounting for them, rolling up those nickels and the dollars, taking them to the bank. Uh, saving nothing less than 10%, but hopefully a lot greater than that. Um, I love the book. Yeah, Richest Man in Babylon. You um, Young people today, you can definitely have a lot of uh, tools available to you. Go and Google the five laws of gold from Richest Man in Babylon. And George S. Clayton gave you a very simple tool that you can use. And it's like a YouTube eight-minute video. You know, Kids, they don't have to actually read the whole book. You can too long, don't didn't read. Go to you, 
YouTube, Google it, and they can break down one of the most important factors of this for you. But the five laws of gold um, harken true today, and they will always harken true. Um, the behavior for once you pay yourself first, put money aside, you will find that money will follow you because you will find smart uses for your money. Off that soapbox for now so we can continue on, but I will get back on it later. I <laughs> All right, earning interest. So Albert Einstein said the most compounding, the most powerful force in the world is compound interest. Uh, you earn simple interest on your savings account, <laughs> um, but it will compound over time, right? So the, the, the behavior is simple here. Make sure, so actually, let me back up here. Simple interest is calculated only the little money you deposit. Um, your money grows slowly. Compounded interest is calculated on your savings plus the interest you've already earned. And your money grows more quickly, right? That's just how those two break down. Um, if you ever compare the interest rate on a auto loan to your savings account or a credit card versus your savings account, you will understand that banks understand the power of compounding interest and you will always see it cost you more than growth. But that is not to say that the behavior of saving money is not important. It is wildly important. And um, for young people, my first financial advisor kind of helped me understand the behavior of putting money away in my 401k, letting that grow over time. Um, I'll keep myself a bit off topic, but um, the money that you contribute toward retirement, right, is you're still in the behavior of saving 10% for your short term everyday needs, and then you're putting money away aside for future emergencies. So, whatever that future is, when you're younger, that future just might be an Xbox. That future might be, if you're in your teens, that might be college. If you are in college now, that might be books next semester. The behavior of saving is what's most important. You will swap out what it is you're saving for in the time horizon to achieve that item. Um, Pete, if there aren't any questions, we'll put we'll move on there to uh, managing your money. So that's managing between saving and spending, right? Um, my goal for you young people is to save more than you spend. More often than not, your parents have taken care of uh, the, the, a lot of the needs you have. So your savings will go to a lot of the things that you want, but be mindful the things you want will change. So be in the mindset of not spending it all. Save much more than you spend. Uh, once hey, Keith, enough, just a quick yes, one. Sir. This is kind of, I, I, I don't know where I heard it, but I know it's out there. Acorn is that takes the change of mm. like a transaction and puts it into a, I guess, a mutual fund of some sort. So it's an app. Do you know anything about that or can comment? Yeah, I, you know, I've seen um, I've seen advertisements for it. I mean, I, I think you know, I, I think I use it myself. But I think it's a great idea. It's, it's the idea that young people, you know, um, in fact, I'll, I'll see your point. I'll back up my um, my first financial advisor. <laughs> Uh, grandmother, right? My second financial advisor, uh, Scott Jeffries, helped me set up a just a systematic contribution to mm -hmm. an IRA, independent retirement account. Um, yeah. And, you know, back when I started in my late 20s, you know, you could do it like $50 a month. Um, now, at a 23 year old guy, let me tell you, you will spend more money at the bar with your buddies <laughs> than $50 a month, right? Yeah. So I, I love today any and all tools that help young people. Number one, um, Clark Howard would tell you to save, you know, six to eight months of emergency cash, right? So your expenses yeah. a month, he would tell you to save that first and then, you know, find more um, ways to grow your money, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the, the truth behind what, um, what any financial advisor would tell you and what Albert Einstein was talking about, the power of compound interest, is time, right? Time value of money. I was a Georgia State uh, graduate, you know, finance major. Um, my professors drilled into me the time value of money. Yep. And most young people, the greatest resource they have is time. They're young. So if they put this money aside today in whatever tool you've got available, put it away today. The behavior of consistently saving, that is all on you. So whatever you decide to use is great. But the behavior of you making sure that you budget the resources you have that you only consume. 80% of what you make, you put 10% aside for the future. Maybe you put 10% aside for whatever faith you may hold. 
But whatever that looks like, you have now trained yourself to live on less than what you take in. So, Peter, that's a good reference. I love, I love these tools young people have nowadays. Um, become a smart spender, right? So, you know, to pretend like, you know, we don't need to purchase ties and suits is, you know, it's a lot. We, we, we need things, right? Um, know where your money goes and track what you buy and understand the need versus want, right? That's the key difference, the behavior of understanding that need versus want. An Xbox is definitely a want, a need, food, water, shelter, um, resources for your family, yourself, right? These are needs. Um, McDonald's may be a want, but you know, a simple sandwich to consume might be a need, right? Um, off the soapbox for now, we'll uh, continue on next slide there, Pete. Before you spend, I'm gonna introduce an ugly word to young people called a budget. It's an ugly word because young people don't like the budget. I understand. Listen, I, I my very first job was in fast food. And believe me, for anyone who's ever worked fast food, when you have dealt with the public and provided a good you know, resource, um, sometimes the, um, the way you're treated might not be the best. So in your mind, you think, if I've worked 40 hours, I've worked this hard, then I'm going to go and spend it all, right? <laughs> the best thing for you to do is to budget, right? Ask yourself, do I need this? Can I borrow this thing, right? So, um, you know, maybe there's a camera that you want or something that you know, a hobby that you have. Um, you know, I know a lot. Of, um, some of my colleagues are in photography. You know, camera equipment is expensive. I will beg, borrow, and steal if I really want to get this image right. I'll say, hey, who has this particular camera so I can capture this image, <laughs> um, rather than having to go buy it myself. Um, questions: Can I buy it secondhand? Right. So. Craigslist and eBay, this is really outdated. Um, Amazon has everything, right? Sometimes you can save money with that. Um, you know, finding that second <laughs> purchase place, maybe used uh, with electronics, you kind of run a risk. But the idea is simple. If you have identified this as a need, you said, can I save money on this need? Um, and can I share it? Can I, uh, can I share the cost with a friend, right? So, hey, uh, you know, you and your buddies all want to go out to a concert, and I'm talking non-COVID times, right? You want to go out to a concert, you've got to travel, rent a car, et cetera. You know, let's split this cost four ways. Let's, um, heck, there have been plenty of times me and my buddies shared a hotel room sometimes, so it's like four of us sleep on the floor just so we can reduce the cost of us to get to this event um, to make life a little easier. The kids nowadays do a lot easier. You can, you can share an Uber ride, right? And you can um, PayPal or um, cash app each other the money for the cost of the ride. You can, um, your peers can split costs so much easier. But all right, so back to that ugly um, word, right? Budget. This budget puts you in control of your money. A budget is a tool for knowing where your money comes from, right? The income and planning where it goes, and that's saving and spending. Um, the thought process is that it doesn't really matter what you make, it's what you keep, right? Um, and the young people who listen to uh, hip hop will recognize which artist said that. <laughs> um, but it's true, it, it, it really very much is true. It matters not what your income is, it matters what you're able to save and retain. Um, Pete, advance once more, I know we wanna um, stay good on time. All right, creating a budget. Um, this may be hard to track, but thankfully I've given um, um, Pete and Miss Kelly some tools for how to create a budget, right? But the thought process, is, especially for you young people that are, um, you know, you're probably college, uh, in college now, and you're thinking, hey, uh, one day I'm going to move out on my own, right? <laughs> um, you being in the behavior now of putting money aside for what future rent would look like, and I can guarantee a lot of you are going to have to get a roommate because the rent is through the roof now. <laughs> um, my first, uh, gosh, my first apartment was six hundred dollars um a month in rent and i split that with one of my one of my buddies we each paid three hundred dollars plus utilities etc um man you know, you know that was a long time ago right? <laughs> uh, rent is much more expensive nowadays um and i'm sure that apartment complex now has a beautiful tennis court pool they've upgraded it so it's more more amenities will cost you more but a budget is that tool that puts you in control of your money without a budget Without a budget, you are at the whim of others, right? And the whim typically is your wants as you scroll through social media and you say, oh, wow, <laughs> apparently I Googled, you know, 
this camera or you know this shirt or this you know this outfit earlier and now there's a little advertisement in my in my social media that says hey click this link you can buy it right um the yeah. world today is designed to get you to consume money understand yeah, what money makes if i can money. jump in keith I, I, yes somebody told me this being i'm a marketing guy there are uh, some very brilliant marketing people out there that know how to get the money out of your wallet and into theirs and without yes. a budget it's easy to be influenced by these factors and you'll make that decision because they're pretty good at what they do so you a budget right. has right. really gives you guidelines on making better decisions the other one i know you mentioned men i i used that for years and then i use now every dollar counts dave ramsey's mm -hmm. uh, um, app and mm -hmm. um, you know, we used to have the budgets written all down. Now it's, it's, you know, in the app and it really is a great tool because they look for tools out there that'll help you do things that, you know, are important to your, you know, accumulating money and, and wealth and being more responsible out there. So go ahead, Keith. I'm sorry to yeah, most throw that out there. No, that's good. Cause we were going to harp on this and believe me. So if you were, um, if you were at Thanksgiving dinner with me, you would be bored to tears <laughs> if you were in my family because you would have heard this consistently. I have a two year old son and he's going to hear this all of his life. I've got nephews that are, you know, 10, 12, 8, 9 and such. They will continue to hear this. My nephews, my niece, my, my oldest niece now is 22 and she heard this since she was six. And <laughs> the great thing is that she has seen in her life proof of exactly what her uncle is talking about. Um, because now she's, you know, more independent and she's doing these things and she's using the modern, you know, spin on the old principle of exactly what we described there. So that's, um, I love it when young people come and say, what do you think about this? Or, you know, this new tool I ask, is it a tool to help you track and budget your money? <laughs> is it a tool that helps you save your money or is it a tool to help you spend your money? If it's a tool to help you spend your money, I'm not as interested in that one, but the first two I am very interested in. Um, what I love nowadays, especially if, you know, uh, for young people that are using like the, the budget tools that are just in their own online banking, um, it helps you take a look at what you spent money on, let's say in July, so that you can now plan a budget, you know, for you know, based on actual spending. Because, um, and I'll talk to the older you know, people nowadays. Um, I believe that I'm a sports fan, right? I, I, I call myself a sports fan. I like I, I watch sports. Apparently, I have um, spent more money on my hobby drone building than I have on any major league sport ever. Right. So when I put a budget away for, you know, uh, fun out sporting events and I put you know three hundred dollars in it. Great. It's never going to get used. But when I track what I spent on Amazon getting parts into this house to, uh, to build a five pound aerial object, um, without that budget, <laughs> I would have consumed much more. So. It's good for you to get an actual budget based on what you really are consuming. Um, there's some templates for budgets out there, right, um, that are good. But the goal is always to customize it to your needs. And I saw in the chat it says seek out a financial mentor. Um, yes, that is extremely important for and a lot of times for young people, your first financial mentor you know, are your parents. Right. So um, it may be a good idea to understand what it takes for you to plan, especially when you're in that teenage range where it will post, you know, soon to be post college, where you're looking at possibly venturing out on your own. You know, you need to understand that um, balancing for utilities, um, accounting for grocery bills, right? And, and, you know, making sure that you know when, you know, you can save money on double coupon days, as an example, right? To help you control that food cost budget. So that maybe you can put more money aside for that trip to, you know, with your friends there. So, um, Pete, if we're ready for any more questions, we can move on to what I think is the last section to wrap yeah. up. Yeah. And Keith, you know, I, I heard somebody, you know, they were talking and you'll read about stories about people that retire real early and they have aggressive savings plan. They had an aggressive budgeting plan that enabled them to um, have the freedom that they had. Now, if you give off that that gratification that we get from buying things uh, till later, um, you're going to open up a whole wealth of, of options. And I think yes. that's what you, you know when you're talking about budgeting. If you're going into your own business, you got to have a budget. I mean, that's yes, just you do. It's going to be necessary. So learn young how to do a budget for your own self, 
and it'll probably parlay into some good habits as you create a business and are in that environment. So yeah, credit hey, report. Listen. Let's let's hear this because it's important. Oh and, yes, uh, oh yes. <laughs> something that so can be a, an anchor or a, a great resource for us. Go ahead, Keith. Oh yes. So and this I want to explain to you people what credit reporting is and credit scoring is. If you if you just think about it in an abstract idea, um, if I give you a dollar today and you promise me to give me return the dollar plus a nickel for you know me giving you the dollar today tomorrow will you keep that promise that is the summation of what that credit report is really tracking right um there are numerous <laughs> countless resources at this point um for young people to be able to take a look at and monitor you know Credit monitoring is now its own business, right? But if you understand the elements of the credit report itself, and if you understand the thought process that goes into it, then you will have a tool that might save you money on a credit monitoring service, right? Pete, you said marketing. <laughs> you can get a nickel out of you every time, right? You get a dollar out of you. Yep. Um, if you understand what is happening, then maybe you can adopt your own system, which you can be knowledgeable about your credit. Um, in a way that you know might save you the money or serve someone is doing it for you. So let's advance once more um, to ask a very simple credit, right? And um, what is credit, right? So if you go out there and Google what is credit right now, if you ask the question, what is credit, you'll get information. If you just Google credit, you'll get advertisements. <laughs> so what is credit? Credit is a financial tool that will help you pay for you know, many important things, right? Um, when the time comes, the ability to get credit and using it wisely um, is affected by the way you manage your money now. So before, when I said saving is the most important behavior that you can have, right? Um, there's a reason for that, because it, when the time comes, you need things that you may have to commit to paying a dollar and a nickel later. If you have a strong savings behavior today, if you have strong budgeting behavior that will not be a problem. Um, if you don't do that, then it will be more problematic. My very first credit card, um, I got back on the days you can get a credit card on a college campus. Um, I was one of those guys that saw the Frisbee, saw the t-shirt, got a free slice of pizza, said, yeah, sure, I'll sign up. Um, I recognized though as a young person because I was a finance major then that although my parents told me, avoid credit, stay away from credit, I recognized that my generation was going was one in which credit was used for everything, right? So it's either the plan is really to either get ahead and manage it or have it manage you. Um, our generation has credit reports pulled for jobs, right? <laughs> um, you know, apartments. Uh, when you are seeking insurance, the better credit you have, the lower rates you're paying. So these are things outside of auto. I mean, I didn't finance my first automobile until I graduated college. And I was assistant. I was assistant manager at the bank. If I ever financed uh, every car that I had paid for, I had paid, um, you know, cash and just kind of tinkered around and keep it running, right? Um, but I still understood that you needed to get ahead of the credit game. Um, uh, there are five factors that ultimately impact your credit. And what I love about this young generation today um, is that. I remember when I was in college, you know, the, the grade engineering that young people do, right? You know, you just need to get a three point on grade point average. Okay, you're here midpoint of the year. Um, you need to get uh, an 80 or above on the next couple of tests in order to get the grade point average you need. When you learn those five factors of credit, it's the exact same concept, right? What I've discovered is most people just don't know what they are. So knowing what they are will, will benefit you over time. But here are tips are the ways you can establish a good credit reputation. So whether you know the exact factors and their weights matters less than you understanding exactly what's, you know, the, the thought process behind it. So uh, when you become a bank customer, you'll be you're building that reputation um, with, with that bank, right? Once you begin using credit and improve your credit every time, um, you want to pay bills, obviously, on time. 35% of your score um, is factored by do you pay the credit obligations you have on time? So the very first lesson that you learn in finance is never miss a payment. It is 35% of the credit score, uh, you know, depending on the credit uh, 
structure there, but but the thought is that's the most important way. So what, whatever the waiting is, that's the most impactful thing is do you pay on time? Missing payments or forgetting to make payments will adversely affect you. Um, so your credit reputation is summarized in a credit report. Um, this is a month to month record of your interactions with banks and credit issuers, right? Um, reflects the following. Do you pay your bills on time? How much total debt do you have, right? So imagine this. Imagine you're carrying water buckets uphill, carrying a full water bucket <laughs> with both arms extended is a lot more burdensome than carrying both buckets that are filled maybe a quarter of the way, right? Thought process, how much debt do you have? Um, how long have you used credit? That was a strategy when I was young. I realized that, wow, that was one of the weights for how credit is reported. So it seemed beneficial to me to start credit early, right? So time value of money, <laughs> time value of me using credit, but doing so wisely will control key. Um, how much do how much debt do you have? We said there. Um, what kind of debt do you have? So credit cards, vehicle loans, home loans. So this is revolving credit versus installment credit, right? Um, that balance is reflecting your score. Um, credit is a finance tool, that, yeah, so, we, so we know what, what it does. But um, the thought behind it is your goal is to not. I, mean, I don't. Know, young people used to do this forever ago. It was bad information. But they would run out, get a bunch of credit cards, charge the candy bar, close the account. Right. Not a good idea. Um, here's your credit report. Your credit report reflects, you know, companies that you do business with that report um, monthly or whatever, whatever frequency of time. Um, get to know this credit report. Use many of the tools that are out there. Um, annualcreditreport.com. Nothing else in front of it, just annualcreditreport.com. Um, I know Susie Orman is it. I've seen her endorse um, my FICO, right? There are a lot of different credit reporting and credit answers kind of locations, um, but there are only three bureaus, right? So that's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Get to know and understand what is in your credit report. Um, a unique thing about Georgia is you get two free copies of your credit report every year. Um, so for my wife and I, I get mine on my birthday and I get hers on her birthday. And the behavior that I have there is I want to make sure that nobody else is using my credit but me. Right? So if I see a credit account that I don't recknize, that's a very quick phone call. Um, knock on wood, so that doesn't happen. Um, but understanding what is in your report is very important. And I know we're wrapping on time. So, um, you know, really in summation here, you know, it's, 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 it's understanding you and your money. It's choosing the right partners to help you, guide you with your money. And if you... Um, uh, take a look at that, that the book, Robert um, and George Clayton's Rich Man in Babylon. It talks about making sure you consult wise counsel for how to properly use money. Um, it's a very good idea. So somebody mentioned a financial mentor. That's fantastic. But is you understanding your money, you choosing the right partners, like people one to one to help you with it. And then it's doing business with you know people and entities that will help, you know, help you reach those goals. So um, bullet point summaries there. Um, does your bank have a good reputation? Um, does the bank you have have the services you want and can you afford the fees if there are any, right? Um, take care of your checking account. Um, ensure, you know, enter all your transactions, calculate your balances of every purchase and reconcile this behavior, right? So, because your goal is to, as a young person is to start out with a good reputation. Life will hand you some curveballs. But if you understand the plan in the beginning, you will be very um, you'll be very adapt at handling those situations they come. And I know we're knocking on time, but um, what are any That was amazing. <laughs> Great information. Great information, uh, Keith. Thank you so much. Uh, I can't tell you enough how important it was to have you uh, as a part of this live streaming series because mm -hmm. banking information is invaluable to all of us. Um, the more information we mm -hmm. have, the more smart decisions we're going to make, right? And yeah, I think you great. helping to position our students and also our parents and others being able to benefit this morning is huge. So thank you so much. Uh, you, um, we are, we are at the end of our uh, live streaming, but I do want to 
make sure that we have a number of people who can participate and should be a part of the drawing because later today we will definitely do the drawing and post that information on our Facebook page. So if you have been participating, make sure that your name is right there on our page as a part of commenting during the session because your name will go into the drawing and more information will be forthcoming on your ability to win our prize, which uh, has been donated to Kenrod uh, for our back to school. And we weren't able to give it last month. So it's awesome that we actually have participants that we're going to be able to share that with today. Also, Keith has provided some resources. Look out for that as well. He's giving us actual handouts on uh, making sure we keep our credit on top and also that we're budgeting. He emphasized how important it is, <laughs> budget. Uh, and we're going to make sure we do that so that we can all be in a better position. Uh, also, before I wrap up, want to just thank Pete Kane. Mr. Pete Kane with Digital Growth ATL. Thank you so much, Pete, because Pete is making this happen. Exactly. Um, Kenrod is able to be online live streaming each month because of Digital Growth ATL led by Mr. Pete Kane. So we just really appreciate this uh, in kind donation and. Um, we're going to have another exciting show coming up for everyone October the 14th. So mark your calendars. We're going to have Kyle Castlin, who's going to talk about live life lessons and the NBA G League, what that experience is like um, as a professional basketball player. So for those of you who are interested in that, please tune in. Also, I want to remind everyone that right now our tutoring is full speed ahead. So we have tutoring uh, availability at Kumon Cascade. Those of you who are in the city of Atlanta and you're in the Cascade area, Cascade Road area, we do have slots available for math and reading. So those of you who need that extra support outside of your remote learning with your school, please contact the Kumon Cascade Center that is uh, listed on our website. Pete, do you have anything that you would like? Yeah, absolutely. I just want to encourage people to, to share this because when, once you get exposed to a per person like Keith, you, you get to, to learn the basics. I tell my girls, it's the skills you learn and financial skills are so important to life because it's just, it's part of everything that's woven inside of us is how do we manage the resources that we're given? So it's, um, you know, seek out a person like Keith, a mentor that can get you started on the right path because the earlier you do that, the better. And also for Kenrod, you know, I, I know a lot of people are familiar with what Kenrod does and some are not. But if you're an individual out there that wants to give back, you know, um, Kelly's Foundation provides resources, educational resources to help kids early in life get the resources they need to prepare themselves for later in life. So if you're a professional like Keith and you have a, a skill, get a hold of, get a hold of Kelly and let me pr put her information up here. And that way you can uh, provide your skills like Keith is doing to help others. And there's so many things when it comes to determining your career and what options you have that if you can help us get the word out about and teach like Keith's doing, We'd love to have you be a part of it. So get a hold of um, Kelly, give her a call, uh, email her. And Vicki, I know you left the message. Yes, it was recorded. So I'll put that information. It's um, in a couple of different resources, but if you put your email down there, we'll make sure you get a recording. And um, thanks so much, Keith, for taking your time out to educate us Thank on- you. By Thank you guys for having me. The in the basics. It's, <laughs> it's always good. I, I was sitting here learning and then taking it in. And it's you can always continue to learn. And Kelly, thanks for what you do for kids in your family. Yes, Kelly, thank you.
Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, Thank fantastic. you both. Hey, Keith, you may have sparked some interest in some future financial planners or, or bankers out there. <laughs> so, hey, listen, so it, much. It, was, it was done for me. Someone took me aside and gave me the tools and resources to understand the why of things. And I can't get it done until I, you can tell me the what, when, and how. But until I have the why, I, I don't get it. So, um, if I can do that very same thing for next generation, that is fantastic. You guys, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a thank pleasure. you. Thank you. Have a great day. All you right. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for tuning in. All right. Bye-bye.